Bruce Levine, Ph.D. psychologist and author of Common Sense Rebellion, agrees. He states, remember that no biochemical, neurological, or genetic markers have been found for attention deficit disorder, oppositional defiant disorder, depression, schizophrenia, anxiety, compulsive alcohol and drug abuse, overeating, gambling, or any other so-called mental illness, disease, or disorder. And psychiatrist David Kaiser sums it up like this. Modern psychiatry has yet to convincingly prove the genetic biologic cause of any single mental illness. Patients have been diagnosed with chemical imbalances despite the fact that no test exists to support such a claim. And there is no real conception of what a correct chemical imbalance would even look like. Now, let's explore what psychiatry claims is scientific proof of mental illness. Let's take a look at brain scans. Stephen Hyman, the director of the U.S. National Institute of Mental Health, admits that brain scans produce pretty but inconsequential pictures of the brain. While psychiatrists claim that brain scans can now detect certain mental disorders, a May 2004 article in the San Jose Mercury News said that many doctors warn that the use of such scans, quite apart from not being scientifically validated, is unethical and dangerous. Quoted in the same article, psychiatrist Douglas Marr said, there is no scientific basis for these claims of using brain scans for psychiatric diagnosis. At a minimum, patients should be told that it is highly controversial. And Dr. Michael DeVoe from the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center states, an accurate diagnosis based on a scan is simply not possible. I wish it were. Despite the abundance of alleged biochemical explanations for supposed psychiatric conditions, Joseph Glenn Mullen of Harvard Medical School is emphatic. Not even one has been proven, quite the contrary. In every instance where such an imbalance was thought to have been found, it was later proven false. Per the psychiatric research, claims or suggestions that today's brain scans have proven that mental illness is caused by diseases or chemical imbalances in the brain are simply not true. Now, if you'd like to read factual information on why psychiatry is a pseudoscience, please call the number on your screen. 800-631-0744 right now. We'll send you free information without obligation. When we return, we'll talk about how scientific psychiatry is in the courtroom. Has your child or someone you know been falsely labeled with a mental disorder and given dangerous mind-altering drugs? If your child has been labeled with ADD, attention deficit disorder, or ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, and given psychiatric drugs, there is something you should know. According to leading pediatric medical experts, these psychiatric labels have no scientific basis whatsoever. If you or your child have been abused by psychiatric treatment, call CCHR for help at 1-800-782-2878. Don't wait until it's too late. Call now, 1-800-782-2878. A public service announcement by the Citizens Commission on Human Rights and International Watchdog Group. Call 1-800-782-2878 or visit our website, cchr.org. Morals, they're not hard to learn. We just have to teach them. This has been a public service announcement brought to you by the Way to Happiness Foundation. For a free information kit, call 1-800-815-0242. One of the greatest harms perpetrated by the use of the DSM, Psychiatry's Diagnostic Manual, is the reliance upon it for the insanity defense in our courts. While this defense has been around since the 1800s, it only began to be perceived as scientific with the introduction of the DSM in 1952. The entire gist of psychiatric testimony is that the criminal is not responsible for committing the crime. Psychiatry's dilemma is that rarely can its members agree on what criminal responsibility means. The problems created by this have plagued the court system for decades. 
In a 1962 article in the Northwestern Law Review, psychiatrist Alfred Bauer cited a case where his hospital received a patient for a three-month observation period before he was to go on trial. Bauer and his two colleagues concluded that he had no mental disorder. The court, however, appointed two private psychiatrists to give their expert diagnosis. After inspection, one announced that the patient was a paranoid schizophrenic. The other said he was merely in a paranoid state. During the trial, the two hospital psychiatrists testified that the patient was not insane, while the two court-appointed psychiatrists insisted that he was. To make matters even more ludicrous, the jury found the man not guilty by reason of insanity and still insane, and committed him to the same hospital that had just testified that it had found him sane. You may remember that in 1994, two California juries became hopelessly deadlocked in the trials of Eric and Lyle Menendez, adult brothers who had brutally killed their parents in the family's $4 million home. A team of psychiatrists, psychologists, and therapists were hired to build their defense. One psychologist testified that their brothers suffered from learned helplessness as a result of intense repeated abuse from their parents. Another psychologist claimed the boys had post-traumatic stress disorder. The deadlock came about because no two psychiatrists could agree on the boy's mental diagnosis and members of the jury could not agree that criminality is excusable. The late Jay Ziskin, a psychologist who led a movement to eliminate psychiatry from the court system, stated in a 1988 paper, Studies show that professional clinicians do not, in fact, make more accurate clinical judgments than laypersons. It's about as reliable as predicting the future by gazing into a crystal ball. Dr. Hagen is forthright about psychiatrists and psychologists redefining criminal behavior as diseases. He states, and I quote, Why not just flip pennies or draw cards? Why not put on a blindfold and choose without even being able to identify the patients? It could hardly hurt an accuracy rate that is less than one out of three times correct. There is no psychological cure for the desire to beat up women or to rape and murder them. The very idea that psychology today could even pretend to such an ability is ludicrous." Unquote. As far back as 1884, more than a hundred years ago, the New York Court of Appeals already concluded that 12 jurors of common sense and common experience would do better on their own than with the help of a hired expert, whose opinions cannot fail to be warped by a desire to promote the cause of those that pay them. However, psychiatrists and psychologists have been warping their opinion in the courts ever since. In the process, the pursuit of truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, has given way to reams of meaningless data and fantastic conjecture. Courts are filled with elaborate, serious-sounding deceptions that fully deserve the label used by lawyers themselves. Junk science. You see, justice is the action taken on an individual by a society after that person has violated society's legal and criminal codes. It is an action taken by the group to ensure its own survival. When a psychiatrist or a psychologist testifies that a criminal is insane based on the junk science in the DSM and that he or she should be acquitted or treated instead of imprisoned, justice is perverted into serving the individual and his defense team instead of the group. In this way, psychiatrists have succeeded in weakening and even negating the only legal means that society has to protect itself from the criminal elements. It is vital that medical practitioners universally reject the DSM diagnostic system as a pseudoscience and as a danger to their patients and consequently the public. Trusted with the care of our mentally disturbed, psychiatry has failed utterly to provide any humane solutions to their problems.